Hi, good, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mark Boswell. I sit up there. I'm the Managing Director and called EV Innovations. Uh, we are in the process of rebranding the business, which is why we'll do the logo up there and do the badge on my uh, shirt. I'll tell you all about that in a moment. We're an electric vehicle design and development agency. Um, we have a number of existing customers for, uh, for R&D and vehicle development. Uh, some of those are car manufacturers, uh, where we work with battery management systems or lightweighting existing designs to, to make them more efficient. Um, we're also doing stuff for other companies which aren't <coughs> traditional automotive uh, uh, companies. Uh, we're doing, designing complete electric vehicles uh, for companies like uh, career companies who want something which is unique, specific for their marketplace uh, and various other companies like that. Uh, we also have a range of our own products which will be launching next year. Um, which we uh, a range of commercial vehicles, and two ranges of commercial vehicles, uh, one of which is done with a joint venture in, uh, with a uh, Chinese manufacturer, a company called Eagle Electric Vehicles based in Chudo. Uh, they have the facilities producing 30,000 vehicles a year, so and we've got a joint venture with them to produce uh, a, a truck. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a little while. But, the big thing uh, is we're going to rebranding our company to do the performance engineering as of the 1st of January next year. And the reason for that is that we do an awful lot of work uh, with the Malcolm Campbell Bluebird Trust and Bluebird Speed Records, um, who are responsible for all the land speed and water speed vehicles um, that have been produced over the last hundred years. Uh, so Malcolm Campbell uh, raised his first uh, Bluebird car uh, back in 1912. Uh, he won his first ever race in it. Uh, Bluebird would have, uh, he then went on to race in some of the early Grand Prix. And then beyond that, went into land speed record breaking. Uh, Bluebird's first car over 150 miles an hour, first car over 300 miles an hour. Uh, then to Malcolm County switched to, to water speed records, went 140 miles an hour on water. His son, Donald Campbell, took, uh, took on the mantle in the 50s and 60s and, and got uh, Bluebird cars to 400 miles an hour, uh, up to 438, and was tragically killed at over 300 miles an hour on water um, in 1967. His daughter, Gina Campbell, went on to do water speed records in the 80s and is still uh, doing water speed record stuff to this day, which I'll tell you a bit about later. And, uh, uh, Don Wales, who's the also another grandson of Sir Malcolm Campbell, has been doing electric land speed record breaking since the late 1990s. So we're actually involved with developing some of the next generation of Bluebird performance uh, cars for the Bluebird Trust. So the vehicle you see on the top left, that's the existing electric streamliner that was originally developed in uh, the late 1990s, uh, has been updated a number of times. Um, it's actually come pretty much the end of its life now, we're, we're in the process of replacing it. On the right hand side, uh, this is a, a mock-up, a full-scale mock-up of how we interpreted the Formula E uh, regulations, technical regulations. Uh, we have uh, plans to build, be one of the manufacturers building Formula E racing cars up in 2014. So uh, the technical regulations from the FIA uh, haven't been set. I mean, that's still on from the set, but um, uh, when we actually showed that first, so obviously that would change somewhat, but uh, if we were the first uh, company to actually show a, a mock-up based on those, uh, on those regulations. We're looking at building, well, we, we, we are building uh, for next year a, uh, an electric supercar uh, for Bluebird, which the aim is to take the UK electric land speed record next year. And we have a project for a 500 mile an hour electric uh, streamliner uh, to take the, uh, the, the world record in 2014. So Bluebird Speed Records are a customer of ours, are a paying customer of ours, so um, you know, money in the bank. Slightly different, the vehicles which we're actually developing ourselves, uh, you know, these are our own products. Um, We'll be launching them both in 2013. The first is the Bluebird City, which is an electric light commercial vehicle. Uh, yes, it does look like a mill float, there's a good reason for that. Mill floats, um, you know, everyone recognizes their electric vehicle, so you look, you look at that vehicle, it immediately screams out that it's electric, so great for companies who want to project a clean image. 
Uh, it's also a very practical design for a city-based vehicle. You wouldn't want to be driving this at 70 miles an hour up and down the motorways, but around town, it's absolutely perfect. You've got great maneuverability, great packaging. Uh, we've got hot swap batteries, so that if you're a depot-based operation, career company or a postal organization or home shopping delivery, you can go back to your depot and swap your batteries and keep going. So you're not leaving your vehicle on charge for 10 hours a day. You're literally just coming back to your depot, swapping your batteries in four minutes, and off you go. And for that reason, we think we've solved the two biggest issues with uh, electric vehicles uh, today. The first is uh, you know, how quickly you can charge it and what the range is. You know, we can, you know, the standard range is 50 miles, we can have long, swap, long batteries which will do 100 miles, and you can swap them very quickly. Uh, and secondly, we've got the price right now. Because we're very, very efficient with what we're doing. Uh, you know, yes, the Bluebird landscape vehicle is very exciting, but actually what it comes down to is efficiency. And we've brought that efficiency to get lower cost components, lighter weight vehicles, and so on and so forth. So we've actually got a vehicle that will, will compete in price uh, with a, 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 a large Ford Transit or a Mercedes Sprinter. The price up there at 26995 does not include the, the, uh, the rebate from the government, which is up to 25% of the value of the vehicle, which brings that price down to a lower than the lowest price of the equivalent Mercedes Sprinter uh, or a Ford Transit. <coughs> and of course, you're, as a uh, if you're using these vehicles, they're not paying £200 plus per month on diesel, so it brings the running costs right by down. The other vehicle we've got, something entirely different. It's, uh, we call it the cargo trike. Uh, our students actually have one here today. The vehicles we've got at the moment are prototypes, and we'll have a, a customer demonstration vehicle in two weeks' time. So we decided actually not to show the, um, the engineering samples uh, today. It's a high-tech, ultra-lightweight electric commercial vehicle designed specifically for city centres. Uh, it's very, very efficient. In fact, it's so efficient if you've got a solar panel on the roof, uh, you, can, you can run it purely on solar power. Perhaps in the middle of London in winter, we reckon that on solar power you get 15 to 20 miles. In the middle of summer, in London, you're talking about 40 to 50 miles. So the opportunity for this vehicle, although it looks a little bit small and weird, and we don't see that many uh, in the UK, actually you do it worldwide, it's very exciting. Over a million uh, commercial electric three-wheel, oh, sorry, commercial three-wheel vehicles are uh, sold every year. Almost all of them are petrol or diesel powered. Places like China, Mexico, India, uh, in Europe, Italy, and Greece, there's quite a few of them there. And in mass production, we can get the production costs of this down so that it will compete with these petrol and diesel vehicles. So we're in talks about licensing this vehicle in India and in Mexico. We will be doing this uh, a small volume production here in the UK. Uh, we've got an order book. In fact, our first batch of vehicles are already sold. So uh, yeah, that's very good. Oops, this is a bit, bit weird order. Sorry about that. No. But our core business, now our business model, if you like, EV development, research and development, generating new IP, prototype builds, small scale production, that's core for us. That's really what we're focusing on. For production in volume, we're looking to work with other manufacturers, so we will license our vehicle designs, we'll work with joint ventures. Uh, we've got, one, as I say, already with Eagle Electric Vehicles in China. And we're talking with a number of other manufacturers as well. Uh, so that's really core for us. Um, our own products demonstrate our design capabilities, and of course that they will be an important uh, it, it a source of revenue for us, uh, but ultimately we'll be looking to create a package that off and sell those, bit, uh, sell those products and business around them. Uh, you know, it would be a good way of, you know, for, for investors to, to either invest in the business or to, uh, you know, to get return on their investment. So either we do that through a country franchising and for, for local sales or packaging the whole business off so that you know, a company can be selling our electric trucks and we'll be doing supplying U R and D into that, but that's basically how we see the business going forward. So, that means today we have customers, both for consultancy and for our uh, vehicles and sales, and uh, we're profitable as of today, which is great. I know that comes as a shock to many of you out there, and it came to shock to me, but it's, it's all this stuff. And we're expanding, so we've you know, we've got another projects next year to uh, keep us very busy and to grow our business. We're opening a new factory uh, in North Oxfordshire 
uh, in January. And we have a stable business model because a lot of these projects are long term and they're bringing cash long term. So it's a um, it's a great position to be in. It's taken us a while to get here. But we do have investment opportunities in specific projects. Now, at the top it says investment and entrepreneurial opportunities. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, as I say, we are looking at ways of uh, spinning off our products into new businesses. They don't actually have to be owned by us, we're looking at joint ventures or you know, all sorts of things. Our Blue City truck, we believe we're five years ahead of the OEMs and we will continue to, to innovate and develop on that. We've got competitive price on the vehicle so it can be sold straight away. Uh, and the people we're talking to when we're talking about the Blue City. Uh, you, you, you can talk to fleet managers straight away, not just the person who's interested in buying one or two for environmental purposes. The fleet managers are interested because it can save the money on the bottom line. So, potential for big volume vehicles there. And if you look at the Blue Bird City, you've got a better payload, better city performance than the Mercedes Sprinter. Uh, so, you, know, you can justify buying one, not because it's green, but because it's better. We also have uh, opportunities with the Uber supercar that we'll be doing next year for the last speed of the record. We're looking at feasibility, so this is actually producing a road going vehicle. Uh, as Ian said, uh, in a fancy Tesla, they've opened up the market for the, um, uh, the you know, for a, a high performance electric supercar at 100,000 pounds. Uh, now Lotus have stopped producing their chassis, they can't produce them anymore. So there's no, uh, the, you know, Existing owners can't upgrade and new owners can't buy them. So we think there's a, a potential market there which we want to look into. And our technology on ultra lightweight vehicles. We've got the electric uh, cargo truck, but we can also look at, at very, very lightweight, ultra lightweight, small cars and other types of vehicles. Uh, we believe, we've done some feasibility studies, we believe we can produce a car with batteries so small and light so they can, the batteries themselves can be taken out in a briefcase and you know, taken into a, a flat, for instance, to recharge. So you suddenly you get rid of the issue of, of in the city, where do you charge your electric car? <coughs> Alternatively, solar power vehicles, so if you're going 10, 15, 20 miles a day, we can actually design a vehicle that doesn't require charging up at all for those shorter, shorter runs. So again, changing the, 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 you know, what you can do with the electric vehicle. So lots of opportunities for uh, people who've got ideas and enthusiasm as entrepreneurs to come and work with us, um, and for investors to come involved and get involved with a project uh, or with our entire business. So, summing up, we're profitable, we're growing, uh, we're generating new opportunities, we're a bit like a spark from a pattern wheel, there's, there's lots of opportunities there to get involved. And we're always interested in talking to uh, potential partners, whether you're entrepreneurs or, or uh, Investors, uh, entrepreneurs, preferably with money, because we can't uh, fund everyone else's ideas as well. But uh, <coughs> yeah, come and talk to me. Thank you very much. Two technical questions. Uh, uh, regarding uh, your fuel consumption, you said 250 pounds, say, per month on diesel. If you're going to have one of those van, I think the city bird one, obviously you're going to have the cost of recharging and having a second battery at least, or maybe a third battery. How compatible is that? I mean, you get to, say, it's 250 pounds diesel versus how much does that cost? I mean, the difference might be 50 pounds a month, I don't know, I and mean, that's what I'm asking. Sure. Well, the, the cost of a second battery factor, I think, was under 2,000 pounds, depending on the, the, the capacity, of course. But, you know, the, the base price would be under 2,000 pounds. <coughs> Uh, and the cost of recharging obviously depends on your, uh, you know, what rate of for electricity, but typically it would be in the region of one to two pounds per recharge. So, uh, you know, what we expect is per month we'll be spending about uh, 50 to 100 pounds a month, on, sorry, 50 pounds on electricity with two battery packs, uh, which would be a range of, of uh, 80 to 100 miles a day. Okay, so the difference between the diesel versus an electric. Basically, basically is that uh, you're paying a quarter of the amount. Okay, and yeah. second question regarding your lightweight. Are you moving towards composite like carbon fiber or uh, epoxy based uh, plus fiber or, or are you going through the metal thinner aluminium or uh, cars? 
we're, we're, how are you setting up? Sure, we're, we're, we're yes, it's a bit of both actually. A lot of it is, is actually in the design, uh, but yes, we, we, we do have carbon technologies. The issue with carbon is that it's very expensive, so you, you can't, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff we're doing is with aluminium because it keeps you through the, you know, the production cost down as well. Because, uh, yes, it's all very well good producing an ultra lightweight vehicle, but if it costs 10 times as much as a um, you know, steel based vehicle, you're not going to be able to sell them. So, for example, our cargo trucks are using aluminium as a basic, you know, the basic uh, chassis. Um, for the, the, the version which we're talking to the Mexicans about, price is all important because they're, we're, they're trying to compete with a petrol powered vehicle which, which retails for £900. So, for that, yes, it's going to be slightly heavier if we're going to do it with steel. It's still, the, the whole vehicle is still going to weigh less than 120 kilos. Very, very lightweight. Uh, and we can then manufacture it and sell it at about a 15% premium over the petrol vehicle. <coughs> Could you talk a bit more about the, the supercar? Mm. Mm. Yes. Um, that was the name. They have supercars can range from 100 to 800 and then performance can range to what's your What do you think is the sweet spot for an electric supercar based on the Tesla experience? Well, um, basically, what our sponsors of the last one is. Uh, well, sorry, what Google Trust has been out of the last fault to come from their sponsors uh, is a, uh, a supercar with a 0 to 60 in sub 3 seconds um, and uh, a top speed uh, of 18, uh, which we can we beat just. Um, but what they want to do is at a target price of £100,000 vehicle. Um, based on that, we can achieve that, which we you know we can. Then uh, we've been verbally told that there will be orders for at least eight track day cars afterwards, uh, so only about hundred thousand pounds. And um, yeah. Yeah, we've actually been incorporating battery swap technology in that because for a track day car, obviously, mm -hmm. you want to be able to, you know, you get one way in there driving in, there's sort of, you know, 20 minutes and you drive us a bit, swap the battery, you go out again with the next person. So, yeah. so that's what we're doing there. That's what we. we uh, our interpretation of Formula E was before we could change and we could be able to get into battery swap technology. Hi, yeah, Ian Monovich from Fly Transportation. Question about your battery swap infrastructure. Um, what, how much does it cost? And um, how does it actually work? Okay. And there any sort of safety issues on it as well? Well, the, um, the battery swap for our electric truck. Uh, we basically have pods uh, on the vehicle which can be lifted off with a pallet mm -hmm. of the truck, so your infrastructure cost is pretty much nothing, as it were. Um, the, the reason for going that way is that the logic is that our customers will already have a depot or a warehouse that are based out of. So you know, you'd be going into that depot to load up your vehicle at the beginning of the day, driving off, doing morning runs, coming back, unloading, reloading, swap your batteries at that stage. So we haven't got uh, on-stream battery swapping or anything like that. It's specific. It's specifically for customers who've got their own depots and want uh, to, to be able to swap your batteries within the depot. So uh, yes, we can do a completely automated system when we mock one up. Uh, nobody wants to spend the sort of five thousand pound per, uh, uh, per system when they can get a, uh, a pallet lifter for a hundred pounds. So yeah, that's yeah. We, we we can develop it if there's a customer need for it. There are any safety issues around battery storage? Because um, I, I, I don't know if it helped develop the legislation in that respect in terms of you know, holding batteries in location and what needs to be around that. Uh, there, aren't, there isn't really any need for legislation as such. I mean, uh, bearing in mind that most of our customers and most people who've got warehouses already have forklift trucks and things like that which are electric powered. Uh, battery swapping on the forklift trucks has been around for 60 years. Uh, and so obviously, uh, you know, charging up on the premises is has been around as long as the trucks. So it, it, in that respect, it, it's very similar. There, you know, there isn't any, uh, anything new. Uh, the, our pods themselves are fully uh, enclosed um, and, and, and safe in that regard. 